Well, let's get stuck into the Sunday morning papers. I'm delighted to be joined now by senior news political commentator Nigel Nelson with GB News, formerly of The Mirror and The People. Nigel, lovely to see you this morning. Let's start with Storm in Starmer as we're headlining it because <laughs> he's made a bit of an intervention at the Munich Security uh, Conference. It's been interpreted by the Sunday Telegraph as a sort of slight on Donald Trump mm. making that point about NATO defence spending. Uh, how do you interpret it? I mean, he's over in, been over in Munich trying to look very prime ministerial. Yeah, well, that's the point of going there, to actually show that he's there on the world stage, that he's about to be prime minister, and so he needs to meet foreign leaders. Um, he doesn't actually mention Trump in this particular... in, in, in the, the article he's being quoted in. Um, but what he's talking about is that, that, pe that people should actually pull together. Mm. So the, the issue at the moment is that Trump is saying, uh, well, going rather over the top by saying, uh, if NATO members don't stump up the 2% that they're meant to, um, then Russia can go and invade them. It seems to yeah. be the paraphrase he's using. I mean, the second half of that seems a bit OTT, but the first half of it is a fair point, isn't it? I note as well in the Sunday Telegraph that, lo and behold, he's not even in power, and yet Trump is pushing the dial yeah. because a load of these European countries are now scrambling to make their 2% mm. pledge because they don't want to look like they've got yeah. egg on their face if he becomes the next president. I think president. That, that, that when, when uh, Trump was, was, uh, were, was president and made these comments by saying, look, everyone's got to, got to actually stump up the money that they agreed in 2014. And back then, it was only uh, the, the US, UK and Greece that actually were stumping up the money. Now, 11 NATO members are doing it, but you've still got a, a membership of 31. And Germany Germany, for instance, won't be able to get get uh, their money in place until until 2031. I mean, it's interesting, this intervention. He hasn't mentioned Trump, but, you know, everybody knows what he means. Uh, his uh, shadow foreign secretary, David Lammy, has been pretty robust in his criticism mm. of Trump in the past. So have other members of the Labour Party. It's going to be a bit tricky, isn't it, if he's PM and Donald Trump is president? It'll be tricky, but I mean, again, I think start, uh, that um, Keir Starmer at some point will have to make a visit to America. Um, but what he's also saying in this piece in the Telegraph is that he'll work with whoever is elected president. Mm. He's trying, he's doing the sort of thing, the, the usual um, uh, politician thing of not interfering with somebody else's election. Although is he being a little bit too complacent? He's released this slick video this morning, looking very prime ministerial. There's a warning from David Blunkett in the Mail on. Sunday today. Call me a party pooper, but Sakir Starmer uh, must not take victory for granted. I mean, they've won these by-elections, mm. but you know we haven't actually had a national vote. I appreciate what the polls are saying, but isn't it more about Tory apathy than Labour success? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, both, both in King, Kingswood and Wellingborough, it's, it's Tory voters mostly staying at home because they're just fed up with the Tory party. Um, what David Blunkett says on the Mail on Sunday is that he's he's looking back uh, not to the last few elections. He goes right back to nineteen. 1964. Mm. And what do you say? you remember clearly. No. <laughs> <laughs> joking, yes, I think it was in Nappers at that stage. Um, so he, he's going back to, to 64. And what he says is, Tor it's a similar situation, Tories in complete chaos. Um, Labour looked like they were going to get an absolute landslide and ended up with just uh, a majority of four. Yeah, Theresa May would have been happy with that. Well, that's right, yes. Um, um, so and, that's and, a good it, point, isn't it? You know, it, it, this idea that they're already in power, I mean, needs to be avoided. Let's just move on as well to what the by-elections seem to be suggesting in terms of the timing of the next election. I can't really believe this, but the Mirror says the Tories are eyeing a May vote. Are they kamikaze? And Dan Hodges in the Mail on Sunday is also saying that the unpalatable truth is the longer Rishi waits to call an election, the worse it will be for the Tories. May election? Have they gone mad, Nigel? Well, I think that, that um, they've been laying the groundwork for a May election since last year. Um, now, um, what Mikey, Mikey Smith is saying in the Sunday Mirror is that the reason they're thinking about it again is because they don't think that Rishi Sunak can last until mm. uh, till the autumn because his own MPs might topple them. Dan is saying things aren't going to get any better, so you might as well go now. I mean, what they were doing was that um, back in, in November, the first thing was uh, national insurance ta tax cuts. Now, what that did was they brushed that through in January, idea being you'd have three months in your pay packets until May. Yeah, bedding in that then economic the, benefit. Then there was the promise to get the boats off. Yeah. And there were also, Whitehall officials were um, quietly talking to local authorities that weren't having uh, a 
elections on May the 2nd mm. to see what the availability of their polling station was. Uh, uh, was. Yeah. So, no, no, given that, the only reason you could be doing that is you're thinking we might go for May. As things have got worse, now we're in recession, uh, the polls are not closing, Rwanda is probably not going to work mm. um, uh, for some months anyway, even if it ever works yeah. at all. As a result of that, it makes a May election look less likely. We'll see. They may just cut and run and say, look, let's just do it. Extraordinary stuff. Let's talk about the Farage factor quickly. Tories already fear reform. If Farage were his leader, they'd be truly terrified. I mean, that's in the Sunday Times. I think it's a pretty accurate assessment, isn't it? It's interesting to see reform doing that well without Nigel Farage in an official role. I appreciate he is in that honorary chairmanship role. And also without the name recognition that UKIP had. Yes, and uh, I mean, uh, Nigel keeps teasing us about what he's actually going to do. We still don't know whether he's going to really get stuck into the election. Do you want to know election. what I think he's going to do? Go on. Dive bomb in about eight weeks before the election. Could be. Uh, that's what the Tories are, uh, are terrified of, the idea that it will be, 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 be hit two months before. But some really interesting figures they come up with, that um, given that they got 13%, reform got 13% of the vote in Wellingborough, which is the set, which is about the same, a little bit more than the than UKIP got back in 2015. Mm. So they had four million votes in 2015, only one MP, but yeah. even so. Well, the, the figures that, that the, the Sunday Times have come out with is uh, the damage they could cause in, uh, to, the, to the Tories. So at 10% of the vote, the Tories lose 39 seats, 12% 47 seats, 15% 63. So they are a significant, if we, if when the, the polls narrow towards the election, mm. and we are are just looking at looking a lot closer they could be the major player but the farage factor i think puts up the predicted vote share to around that 17 percent mark which is obviously like cataclysmic for the tories um we will watch that with great interest and await mr farage's announcement when it comes let's just have a quick chat uh, before we finish about the royals because there's a number of a couple of really interesting stories first of all that prince william is building this social housing in cornwall as part of his remit as uh, the duke of cornwall he's in charge now of the duchy of cornwall but equally there's this other story about how william will not allow harry back into the family first of all i mean in your previous sort of mirror stroke people guys the papers were very much against the monarchy isn't an initiative like this william building social housing likely to impress the left yeah, I mean, personally, I'm, I, I am impressed that um, uh, my position has been previously that I'm not a royalist, but I am a monarchist. And I do think that it's, it's uh, things like this where they connect with the people that is exactly what William should be doing. On the second point about Prince Harry, um, what Prince Harry has offered is he'll come back and do a few duties while his father is uh, father is ill. Yes. William, William is saying... That's according, good of him, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I mean, yeah, whatever, whatever those duties might be, but... Um, William is saying, uh, no way. I mean, according to briefings to the Sunday Express and Sunday Mirror, uh, he says, look, uh, we're just not going to have him. He's not coming back. I think that's probably right, that here you've got um, Harry who abandoned the, the working royal rotor. Mm. He then uh, slagged off his family, first on television, then in a book. It would be a bit difficult to actually bring him back, even in a kind of locum role. As I know, a... but I think it's really intriguing that this has sort of been briefed into the Sunday papers in the sense that, I mean, we saw him in Whistler in Canada with Meghan sort of promoting the Invictus Games. He was, uh, according to a colleague, you know, sort of came over and thanked the press for being there, which I thought was quite extraordinary. <laughs> Unusual. And then they've relaunched this website featuring Meghan's royal coat of arms and very much referring to themselves in a royal sense using their titles. Is it that he is now dabbling with the idea of coming back to royal life because they've realised that it's their royal connections that give them meaning? Well, I would, I would have thought that it's only their royal connections that give them money, um, because they actually, they actually, that's why they don't want to get rid of titles and so on. But that uh, wasn't as part of the Sandringham Summit. They were told in explicit terms by the late Queen and indeed at the time Prince Charles that they weren't to be cashing in on these royal connections. But they did. They weren't to be using these coats of arms and other matters. But they did. Um, yeah. but, the, but at the moment, it seems to be that they're a long way from being able to come back for a full kind of reconciliation. Personally, I'd like to see a reconciliation between Harry and the rest oh, of the family. Softy, no. I know, that's, that's me. Doesn't mean he has to do royal duties, though. No, I think royal duties might be a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. Nigel Nelson, <laughs> thank you for joining me this morning. Lovely to speak to you.